The Department of World Languages and Cultures at Georgia State University presents Arabic 1001 Grammar. In this fifth and final part of the course, we discuss modifying simple sentences. In this lesson, we continue to talk about negating nominal sentences, and in this final section of the lesson, we talk about the mansub or accusative case, the third of the three cases used in Arabic. In the last lesson, we learned to use the verb laysa. We can transform hadha ashab talib, this guy is a student, into ashab laysa habibi, the guy isn't my boyfriend, where laysa is our verb for isn't. If we're looking at a woman, we can say hadha hil fatat taliba, this young woman is a student, al fatat laysat ustadat na. The gal isn't our professor, where we have changed laysa to layset because we are talking about a woman rather than a man. What we're going to do in this lesson is talk about how laysa modifies the khabar or predicate or second half of the sentence. In a normal sentence, I can say hadha shabbu huwa atalibu. This guy is the student. Both the mubtada or starting point of this sentence, the first half, hadha ashabbu, and the khabar or predicate, the second half, at-talibu, are in the marfu case by default. And since they are both definite, we use a single dhamma to mark them, ashabbu, at-talibu. However, if I use the verb laysa, I'm going to say ashabbu laysa al-ustadha. The guy isn't the professor. And this time, I'm going to keep the mubtada of the sentence in the marfu case by default, but because I've used the verb laysa, I am going to mark al-ustad not with a single dhamma, but with a single fatha. This is the indication that it's in what's called the mansub or accusative case. In everyday conversation, this makes little difference. If I look at this young woman, I can say, Hadahil fatatu talibatun. This gal is a student, where again both the mubtada, Hadahil fatat, and the khabar of the sentence, taliba, are by default in the marfu case. I mark al fatat with a single dhamma because it's definite. I mark taliba with the tanween ad dhamm character because it's indefinite. However, if I say she's not the professor, I'll say al fatat laysat ustadatan, where laysat is the feminine form of laysa. Al fatat, because it is the mubtada of the sentence, stays how it is, but ustadha gets a new character. I change from tanween ad dum to tanween al fat, which literally means putting an n on the fatha and is pronounced n. So I say ustadatan. It is indefinite, so it gets a double character, and it is in the mansub case, the third of the three cases, because it follows laysa. Let's take a look at the theory behind the mansub or accusative case. Its formal name is hal anasub, the state of being set up or delegated. Most of the time we say mansub, which means having been set up or delegated. Just learn the word mansub. Normally, both the Mubtada, or subject, and the khabar, or predicate, of a sentence are in the default marfu case. But a sentence with laysa puts its predicate, its khabar, its second half, in the mansub case. Definite mansub nouns are marked with a single fatha, and indefinite nouns get the tanween al fat character, which is pronounced an. In these examples, I can say dhalik ar-rajalu tajirun. That man is a businessman, more properly a merchant. Ar-rajalu gets a single dhamma, because by default it is in the marfu case, and it is definite. Tajir gets the tanween ad dhamm character, because it is by default in the marfu case and indefinite. But in the second sentence, I can say laysa al muwaddafa the subject of this sentence here, the mubtada, is unspoken. It's huwa, because we have laysa, and huwa is the pronoun that goes with laysa. The khabar, or predicate, of the sentence, because it follows laysa, is now in the mansub case, and because it's definite, we mark it with a single fatha. But in the third example, we say laysat muwadhavatan. The mubtada of this sentence is hiya, because of laysat, the khabar of this sentence is muwaddafa, an employee. Because it is indefinite, we mark it with a double character. Because it is after laysa, it is in the mansub case, 
So we mark it with the Tanween al fat character and we say Laysat Muwadhafatan. Let's consider this woman. We can say Hadhil Maratu Hiya Atajiratu. This woman, she is the businesswoman, or in English, this woman is the businesswoman. Both halves of the sentence, Hadhil Mara and Atajira, are by default in the Marfu case. Both of them are definite, so we mark them both with dhammas. However, we can say, Hadhil Maratu Laysat Atajirata. In this case, the second half of the sentence is now in the Mansub case because it follows Laysa. It's also definite, so we mark it with a single fatha. If we look at this woman here, we can say, Tilkal Maratu Muwadhafatun. That woman is an employee. Again, both halves of the sentence are by default in the marfu case. Al mar'a is definite, so it gets a single dhamma. Muwadhafa is indefinite, so it gets the tenween a dhamm character. However, if we make her not something, we can say, Tilkal mar'atu laysat muwadhafatan. That woman isn't an employee. Where tilkal mar'atu remains in the marfu case by default, and it's definite, so we use a single dhamma, but muwadhafa gets the tenween al fat character because it is mansub case because it follows layset and it is indefinite so it gets a double character. So we say muwadhafatan instead of muwadhafatun. This is a trivial difference as far as basic communication goes but will become more important later on. Especially as we will see because there is a spelling difference. If I look at this man I can say hadha rajalu huwa atajiru this man, he is the businessman, or this man is the businessman. Again, both halves of the sentence are by default in the marfu case. Arrajal gets a single dhamma because it's definite. Same thing for atajir. However, if we say he isn't something, I can say hadha arrajalu leisa atajira. This man is just posing as a businessman. He is, in fact, unemployed. So hadha arrajalu leisa atajira. I have kept arrajal in the marfu case, but because atajir follows laysa, I put it in the mansub case, so it takes a single fatha instead of a single dhamma. However, if we make dhalik arrajalu, that guy, an employee, muwadhafun, we say that man is an employee. Now, both arrajal and muwadhafa are by default in the marfu case. The first one gets a single dhamma because it's definite. The second, tenween a dhamma because it's indefinite. If we make him not an employee, however, we say dhalik arrajalu leysa muwadhafan, where dhalik arrajalu has stayed in the marfu case because it's the mubtada of the sentence. But muwadhaf, because it's the khabar or second half or predicate of the sentence, is now in the mansub case because it follows laysa. It is also indefinite, so it takes the tanween al fat character and an extra unpronounced alif. And this is why this is important. Words that end with tanween al fat have another complication. If the word does not end with ta marbuta or hamza, we have to add an extra alif. This is a spelling holdover from Quranic days. The alif is not pronounced. It's silent. It's just a chair, Arabic calls it, a kursi, for the tanween al-fatah. Usually, the tanween al-fatah isn't printed in a printed text like journalism or literature, but the alif is. So you have to get used to looking at words you know with an extra unpronounced alif tacked on the end. Thanks, Arabic. Let's look at this through examples. Dhalika rajalu tajirun, that man is a businessman. Ar-rajal is definite and in the marfu case by default, so it gets a single dhamma. Tajir is in the marfu case by default and is not definite, so it gets tenween a dhamma. But in the second example, I say laysa tajiran, because tajir is indefinite and it follows laysa. It is in the mansub case, and it gets the tenween al fat character and this extra unpronounced alif. However, in the third example, leyset tajiratan, she's not a businesswoman, tajiratan ends with tamarbuta, so we don't need the extra alif. 
This definitely takes some extra time to get used to, so it's worth paying attention to because it's something that you will see over and over again, this extra unpronounced alif. Because classical Arabic grammar thinks of nouns and adjectives as being essentially the same thing, we say hadha ar-rajalu tajirun mujtahidun. This man is a hard-working businessman. The mubtada, or starting point, or first half of this sentence is hadha rajalu, so it is by default. In the marfu case, it is definite, so it gets a single dhamma. The two final words are the khabar, or predicate, or second half of the sentence, they are by default in the marfu case, and they are indefinite, so they get the tenween dumb character. If we say, laysa kasulan, we know that kasul is lazy, but because it follows laysa, it is in the mansub or accusative case, because it is indefinite, it gets the tenween al fat character, and the extra unpronounced alif, which here turns the lem at the end of kasul into the lem alif character, making it doubly confusing. This is something you have to learn to pay attention to if you're going to study written Arabic at all. In the case of this woman here, we can say tilk al-maratu muwadhafatun mujtahidatun. That woman is a hard-working employee. And again, both of the last two words are indefinite, and they're in the marfu case by default, so we put the tanween ad character on them. If we say laysat kasulatan, she's not lazy, here we see kasula, lazy, having the tenween al fath character because it is indefinite and also it is in the mansub case because it follows laysa. However, we don't have to add an extra alif because kasula ends in tamarbulta. Thanks, Arabic. This is one of those things you will pick up gradually via osmosis. Learn to look out for an extra unpronounced alif at the end of a word you already know, and that's the biggest takeaway here. Here are the conjugations of Laysa from the previous lesson. You may wish to take a screenshot here. Here are the little used dual and human female plural conjugations of Laysa, as well as the words we learned last time, al-mustashfa, al-tabib, al-mumarrid, and the two new words, at-tajir, its plural is tujar, merchant or business person, and al muwaddaf a person who has been hired, it means, an employee or white-collar worker, and it uses the regular sound human plurals. Now go out there and look for extra alifs.